In order to live an extraordinary and abundant life, you must focus on your internal battle and win within. My name is Randy Wilson, and welcome to the Rich Mind Podcast. All right, everyone, welcome back to the Rich Mind Podcast. Today, super excited about the guest I'm about to bring to you today. Today, I have with us Scott Allen. Scott is a best-selling author of the books Fail Big, Relaunch Your Life, and Do the Hard Things First. He's published those books in over 16 languages. He's had over 500,000 plus copies sold worldwide, which is a huge accomplishment. Congratulations on that. He's a former corporate business trainer, a transformational success strategist, and he's invested over 10,000 hours in the practice of research into confidence development and mindset mastery. And hey, did I mention he's coming to us today from Japan? He's in Japan, mm. which is, yeah, that's that in and of itself is super cool. You know, it's not every day you wake up thinking, huh, I think I'll just jump on a quick call and have a conversation <laughs> with somebody that halfway across the world. We were talking about the time zone changes and everything like that. But anyways, this is going to be a fantastic conversation. We're going to go into all kinds of topics, procrastination, mindsets, accomplishments, goals, all kinds of things. It's going to be a lot of fun. So Scott, welcome to the show. Well, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me on the show. Absolutely. Like I said, before we even hit record, just the few things that we were able to chat about, I just know that this is going to be a lot of fun. So with that said, I, I kind of gave a little bit of the bullet point list of some of the accomplishments and things that you're involved with, but please take a few minutes and go as deep as you like. As far as tell everybody a little bit about yourself, uh, a little bit about your story, kind of where you're at. I mentioned, obviously you're in Japan. How did you end up there? I mean, I, I'm just curious about a lot of things about yourself. Take a few minutes and tell us about yourself. Sure thing. So yes, I'm Scott Allen. I've been publishing books for about 12 years, I think. And I have about 35 to 40 titles out there. And as you mentioned, they're in a few languages. They're not all in 16 languages, but we're working on it. Um, and yeah, it's just been an incredible journey, which I'd like to dive into a little bit more. And I'll actually start with uh, seeing as we're talking about Japan. That's correct. I've been here for about 25 or 26 years. And how I got here uh, is rather interesting. There's a few stories, but I'll try to keep it brief. So first of all, I am from Canada, uh, and from Nova Scotia to be exact. Right? And I came to Japan in 98. And how I got here was actually um, a big part of the journey. So it actually started like this. I was going through a period in my life where I wanted to, I had to make some changes. You know, things were just... Um, not really moving along. I was, I was working in a job at a good job. I'm an electrical engineer by trade. So I was working in that profession for about six or seven years and life was good. You know, it's always been good, but I just got to a point in my life where I felt like nothing was moving forward. You know, I was just stuck. I felt like, um, I didn't just feel it. I knew it. Like I knew that there's just more out there, more potential there, you know, and, and don't get me wrong. I mean, I had a, you know, good life, good friends and everything like that, but there was just something inside me that was eating away at me going like, there's gotta be more to it than this. And I started listening to that voice. So at the time I was going through, you know, like I said, like some, I guess a transitional period where I wanted to make a change. I wasn't really sure how to do it. And whenever you're not sure how to do something, you need to ask people and seek help. So one day I'm in the bookstore and I wasn't looking for help in the bookstore, but I was walking along and found a book by Tony Robbins and it was called Awaken the Giant Within. So I think it's a very famous book. A lot of people probably know about it. Something said, you've got to get that book. And I did. And at that time, I maybe read, I wasn't really into self-help or personal development at the time. I'd read a couple of books, but those other books that I'd read, they starts to light my brain on fire. Like I felt hungry for more, right? Um, one of them was by um, Hal Urban. It was like 20 things to change about your life or something like that. I can't remember the title offhand, but it was an amazing book with these 20 little uh, like strategies on how to make your life better. And I just kind of, I went through that book and I was like, this is great stuff. You know, I actually felt something inside of me changing and it felt good, right? So what I found Tony's book in the bookstore, I took it home, started going through it. And that's when things really started to change. And I'll explain why. In the book, he says, you have to set out, you know, write out your goals, know what your goals are, be very clear on what they are and very specific. 
And I'd never done that before. I'd never had goals. I think I had ambitions and dreams and desires and wants and all that, but never had really specific goals. So I did that. And uh, he also said, now you've got to make a vision board. And I was like, okay, well, what's that? You know, um, the only thing on my walls at the time were probably like, uh, you know, Guns N' Roses posters and stuff like that. I just had, <laughs> you know, it just didn't, you know, or, you know, it was, it was just, um, so anyway, I started to put this vision board together. And that was when I realized when I put this thing together, I started to realize like every day I started to look at it and what was on the board, by the way, I'll just circle back a little bit. So the goals, there were three goals specifically. There are actually a lot of them, but there were three of them that really stood out. One was I wanted to be an author and I've actually, I've been an author probably my whole life. I just um, didn't write for a very long time, you know, and a lot of uh, authors and maybe wannabe authors will actually say that, you know, like I always wanted to write a book or something, but I actually wrote a book when I was like 13, 14 years old, love Stephen King, grew up with a lot of, you know, Dean Koontz and a lot of other authors. So, you know, fast forwarding like years later, that was still with me. Anyway, I wanted to be an author. I wanted to travel the world and see other countries. And I don't know where that came from because I'd never really been anywhere before. So I was kind of like settled in my place, you know, but when I had that as a goal, which again, just came out of nowhere it's on the paper and I was like, okay, well, that must be it. And the third one was, I just wanted to become a much better human being. And I looked at my list and I go, okay, well, I've got to just like focus on one of these. And something told me it was the, you know, you got to travel the world. And that's what I did. And here's the defining moment though, all right? It wasn't like, just, it wasn't just like, okay, I'm just gonna jump on a plane and go, you know, buzzing around for a few months. It's like, I made a definitive decision, what I call like pivotal decision, where it was like the point of no return. I decided one year from that day, I was gonna be on a plane. I, mean, I was gonna go to Southeast Asia. I wasn't planning on coming to Japan yet, but I just made a decision that I was gonna go to Southeast Asia and I'm gonna start in Thailand. Because something told me, um, I think I was uh, like, the year before I was, um, you know, dating a girl and she went traveling all over Southeast Asia and she told me all about these adventures she had in Indonesia. And I think actually that planted a seed in my mind or like, I just never forgot it. Right. So when I actually sat down, you know, like a year or so later, that was just, that just came out of me. Anyway, what happened with the vision board is, and this was pre-internet. So I went to the library, took out a bunch of books on, you know, these different countries like Vietnam and Thailand and all these like, like, you know, Australia, like any place I could think of. And I just started to, you know, I would, I would like photocopy the pages, cut them out, put them up on my wall. I had my vision board. And the other thing is that made up the board where I had a bunch of positivity quotes that I took from Tony's book and other books, right? And I would write those down on cue cards and put those up because what I was doing, I wasn't just creating my future dream. I was actually rewiring my mindset as well because Prior to that, I think I was rather, you know, in a negative rut, didn't really care much about whether I was being positive or not. And, you know, I did a lot of complaining like a lot of other people. And when I started to shift things around and I, every day I woke up and I just read from those quotes, right? And those things were just like, every time I did, it would just rewire my brain, you know? So what happened, like a combination of that, a combination of knowing exactly what I wanted. Now, again, at this stage, all I knew is I wanted to go traveling and, and that was it. But again, I had made the decision that I was going to do it and nothing changed my mind after that. I never once went, you know, thought, well, maybe I shouldn't do it because, you know, I've got family here and, you know, you can come up with a lot of excuses as to why you shouldn't do these things. But I didn't. I was just like, no, I'm doing this thing. Anyway, um, what happened when you put something like this in motion, you never know what's going to happen. Right. And this is where um, you can call it luck. But um I've had too much luck to really call it that, right? So it was a coincidence one day that a few months later after making that decision, you know, and I was going to go again, I was going to go to Southeast Asia and do this thing. I wasn't sure what I was going to do when I got there. But one day my new, my roommate brought home a newspaper. You know, I never read the newspaper, but it was just there. I picked it up, opened it to some random page just because I had nothing to do. And as soon as right there in that first page that I opened it up to was this, it's like in the center of this page was this, um, advertisement for it and said, teach English in Japan, apply now. And I was like, yeah, that's a great idea. I'm, I'm going that way anyway. Why not just send them a resume, right? So I did send in a resume. A month later, contacted me. A month later, I'm in downtown Vancouver having dinner with a Japanese businessman who came from Japan to interview a bunch of people to hire for this like business school he was opening up. So I just thought nothing of it. Like there's nothing to lose, right? You know, um, so I did it. And 
after the interview, a week later, they called me up and they said, uh, really sorry, you didn't get the job. Um, we chose three people and you were number four. So, you know, something opens up like next year, we'll let you know. And I'm like, all right, great. But, you know, I wasn't disappointed. It didn't change my uh, my plan. I was still getting on a plane. And by this time, I probably had six months left, right? And uh, the next day, they called me up and said, oh, the third guy dropped out. So you're in, right? And that was it. So anyway, they um, it was just an exciting time because it felt like all of this happened because, first of all, I wrote my goals down. I was somewhat specific about what I wanted. I still wasn't doing like, you know, I still wasn't like writing books and stuff, but I was making this plan to go traveling, which... I'd never done that before. Didn't have any money, really didn't have a lot of money either. I was giving up my job and all this, but um, this just felt like the right thing to do. And I just went with my gut, right? And that was it. Six months later, I was on the plane and they took us over. They set us up in a homestay and a car. And I'd like, I think I doubled my salary and I was working half as less. And uh, I knew though, when I got on the plane, like even before that, I knew like, I, I wasn't going to go back. Like, I just felt like something just told me like this was a one-way ticket for me. So anyway, there's more to it the, to the story about um, how I just ended up staying here. Um, but that's how I got here. And the thing about it is that I think the key points here is that, first of all, I made a decision that I never backed down from, right? And I think like I realized in that moment, like anybody can take control of their destiny if they just decide – you don't even have to make the, you don't even have to, it's not even the right decision to make, right? There's no such thing as like the right or wrong decision. I see people all the time struggling with, you know, I don't know if, what if I decide and it's the wrong thing to do. And my take on that is like the only bad decision is the one you didn't make, you know, so um, choose something and, you know, you're going to get a result or an outcome. And then if it's not the result you want, make another decision. And I've just always done it that way. So, um, but the, the other thing too is that it's always worked out like uh, maybe it didn't work out the way i thought it would and a lot of times something better happened right which was the amazing thing about this journey so um anyway i'll just pause there for a moment in case you had something you want to follow up with no that was fantastic i appreciate you going there there's so many questions firing off in my mind that i'm trying to decide in my in my mind which one i want to start with first but yeah i appreciate that so the dedicated i call it a dedicated decision uh mm. So when you first had that discovery, so your story is very similar to mine, meaning I had a kind of an oh crap moment at a corporate position job that I had that the company was downsizing. I got eliminated, you know, just all those kinds of things that a, a, I was actually working for a local retail chain. But anyways, I hadn't discovered the personal development. You mentioned the Tony Robbins book and that type of thing, mm. but I hadn't been exposed to any of that either, but I was, I would consider myself negative as well. I was complaining, mm. just kind of going through the motions of life, assuming that what I was doing was correct. But when I discovered my first uh, introduction to personal development was lead the field by Earl Nightingale. And mm. within that program, it sent me and has continued to send me down this journey of discovery that has been, like you said, it's been a lot of fun. Mm. So my question that I want to tie back into that is when you had that moment when you found that book in the bookstore, you really had a decision to make at that point. Was it more intuitive? Like where, where did that come from to be able to make that dedicated decision? I can vividly remember the first time I went through the program in my mind, I was like, mm -hmm. okay, from now on, every time I get like an awareness piece, if something shows up like a book or if somebody suggests go do this or try, I was like, I decided at that moment, that I was going to go do whatever that jump on Amazon. I mean, this is before mm -hmm. Amazon really, but anyways, go to the library, yeah. whatever, and go get that thing to try to help me get to the next step. That was the decision I made, which has led me to having this conversation with you here today. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious if you can go back to that moment. What mm -hmm. was it? If you hadn't been doing up uh, it up to that point, what was it that made you like flip the switch and make that decision that you were going to go all in? Yeah, what I remember most about it, and because I've done this actually several times now, and every time I did this, made that made a decision, it was the certainty of it. Like there was just no, uh, like I didn't have any self doubt at, at all as to like this is what I should be doing. And just to just quickly, like to go back about, so I'm from Halifax, Nova Scotia originally. When I came to Japan, I was living in uh, Victoria City on Vancouver Island, right? So I'd already done it before where. When I finished um, college back in, you know, way back, like I finished college in um, Halifax and then there weren't any jobs around. And my friend said, why don't you come out West and join, you know, like, and I only knew he was the only person I knew out there. 
and I had all my friends and family. I was living at home and mom and dad were, you know, they were going to support me for the rest of my life. And I thought, oh, you know, why would I, why would I want to leave? But I realized um, one day, same thing happened where I was like, I just looked at uh, the future and I was like, you know, I'm just going to get on that plane and just see what happens. But the moment I said it, the moment I decided it, it was like the same thing. It was like, like, and that was actually the first time I probably, I don't know if it was the first time I did something like that, but it was the first time I could actually remember it where nothing changed my mind. And, uh, and you know, I mean, I was in a relationship and I had a lot of things going for me and it's like, why just, you know, why just throw everything up in the air and get on a plane and go to a place where, you know, to the other side of the country where you've never been before. And something just told me that's a great idea. And the thing is, what, what I remember about it was the emotion that I, I think I'm going to call it the energy. It's the energy I had when I made that decision because I felt excited about it, right? And I couldn't remember the last time I felt excited about anything and I wanted more of it, right? So yeah, my, my parents were very supportive of that because they probably didn't want me living at the home until I was 40. So, you know, I think, they, I think actually my father even bought me the ticket. You know, there's like when I told him I was going to do this thing, he showed up the next day with a ticket. He was like, cashed in all my points. I got your ticket. So maybe that was a hint, but that was I'm a sign, huh? Did. Yeah, yeah. But that was the thing. It's like, you know, and, and the thing that was actually more scary than moving to Japan because when I came here, like there wasn't any fear at all. Like I know, like it just felt like, like it was the right thing to do. Again, it was that emotion that I, that energy I created. Right. And um, I mean, that energy, you can call it intuition, but again, there's just no doubt. So, and yeah, there's uncertainty that goes with it too, because I like, what if I move to the, you know, the other side of the world or the other side of the country and, you know, like, what if it doesn't work out? And like, yeah, there were those little thoughts as well. But then again, it was like living in that uncertainty is where I realized like I actually did most of my growing there. You know, we'll call it, I mean, maybe stepping outside of your comfort zone, but on the edge of uncertainty is like where I thrived, right? So when things started to get really dull or boring, I was like, okay, I need a challenge. I need to do something. I need to shake things up, you know? And um, that was probably how I started again with the writing journey and everything like that. It was kind of like the same thing where I made a decision and I just went all in and, you know, the, re the, the energy took over and I just kind of went forward with it, you know, like the little snowball that starts at the top of the hill and starts rolling down and gets momentum and it gets bigger. I just felt like that all the time. So, but yeah, I mean, that's, um, you know, I think that, if um you know when especially for for people who are kind of i think we all get stuck you know we all get stuck in life and we get stuck in our jobs and we feel like we're in a rut and you know we kind of tell ourselves it's okay to be that way because uh you know i've only got you know 10 more years to go into retirement or <laughs> or whatever it might be but i mean if it, if it up like you can create any opportunity that you want right so i never believed like that i'm stuck in the, i mean sure i may have said that to people before oh you know i'm stuck in this job and you know that they're they're keeping me here and but that's just that's just your mind talking right that's that's not the reality and i realized cuz i've proven it enough times to myself and i think to other people like you can create the destiny that you want is yours if you decide what it is that you want, you even know you don't have to know the end of the story. You just have to decide that uh, you know you're gonna you're gonna play on stage, right? You know you've got to you've got to take that um, an active approach to it, not just a passive backseat. So, yes, so yes, the control taking an active seat, right, getting in the driver's seat of those mm -hmm. decisions. I think a lot of times that could be a little bit scary for folks, but those of us that get a taste of it, like you said, and then all of a sudden it's like the most exciting thing to realize that you can create, it might not move as fast as you want. Like you said, I like the word, use the word pivots. I've had mm -hmm. many, many pivots along the journey. You never know exactly what that destination is, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's so much more exciting to take control, get in the driver's seat and see where it ends up. Cause it's, it's usually, at least this has been my experience. It always ends up better even than what I originally had envisioned. And mm. I would assume it's probably been very similar for that for yourself too. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I mean, we never really know what the outcome is going to be, but um, I was, I think I was pretty good at looking at, uh, I consider myself to be somebody who lives in the future. Like I'm always looking to, you know, the ways to make the future better. You know, what can I do next? What's the next challenge? 
Um, a lot of people live in the future and we've all done this where we lived in the future, but we were in fear of the future, you know, like worrying about it. And that's where worry comes from. Like, you know, worrying about the future and, uh, you know, staying stuck in the past because, uh, well, things never worked out for me before. So why should I, you know, why should I make any changes now? Because that just in, so what we're doing actually is, you know, the future that we create becomes the same as the future of uh, sort becomes the same as the past that we just, you know, escape from or are trying to escape from. So I always believe like, you know, the past is part of your history, right? I mean, and there were mistakes made and failures made and all that stuff is okay because right now in the moment, this is really all that matters and you can make any decision that you want to right now. Yes, we have responsibilities and families and, you know, a lot of people have children and pets and jobs and everything like that that needs our attention as well. Um, but I think that if you do something for yourself where you're like, I'm going to create a future that's just like, for me, it was like, I want to create something that's nobody's ever done before. That's so dynamic. Uh, not just to impress people. It wasn't about that. It was like, cause I wanted to see if it can be done. Like, you know, how far can I go? That's really the question. Right. Because I know like if I can, you know, take this thing a distance, wherever that may be, well, that's going to change other people's lives too. Cause there's other people that are on the journey with you. Right. And uh, you know, it's not just your life that you're going to be changing, but you're going to be influencing everybody else that you talk to, you know, like uh, us on this show today, maybe people are listening to this and I'm hoping that they gain something from it. Right. But that's just, it is like, you know, um, we want to share our experience with other people so they can learn from it and uh maybe decide yeah maybe it's time for me to to make a change i love um the thing is i love change and i also love sometimes i just like doing the same thing again and again and again which we call and call out that a routine and a routine is a really good thing to have but i think that the um for me it's like the the feeling of uh like i'm not moving forward or you know i'm stuck like that's uh that's something that really weighs heavy with me and i think it was actually like yeah i'll mentioned Tony Robbins again, or it might've been Jim Rowan, but one of them said, uh, the only measurement of success is progress. Right. So I just, mm. I think about that every day. It's like, you know, and yeah, I mean, some people say, you know, well, if you're not moving forward or if you're not, you know, making progress, you're dying. And <laughs> that might be a little bit extreme, but I think what they're saying is like, if you're not moving forward, you're just staying the same. And if it's true what they say that the universe is always moving towards chaos and everything's breaking down, then if we're not moving forward, we really are. Um, you know, getting worse, maybe like mentally, physically, everything. So um, having said that, though, I try to, you know, I try to keep a balance with things, um, focusing on always like the mindset is very important, but so is your physical health. So try to exercise a few times a week, meditate every day for 20 to 30 minutes, um, work as hard as I can. And then I rest when I can, when I'm, you know, I mean, rest is important. We need that too. And spending time with uh, friends and family. So, so the rest piece, that's, uh, it's something that I think a lot of people have to give themselves permission to do. It's, it's sometimes it's, you feel like, or you, you're told all the time that you have to just continuously go, right? Push, 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 grind, grind, grind. And I get that working hard mm -hmm. versus, you know, diligently, I guess, maybe instead of just working in, in case of just working, just to be getting things accomplished, right? Or working towards mm -hmm. a, a specific goal or something like that. That's, that's so huge and so impactful. So I've heard you say on other interviews, I, as I mentioned before we hit record, I've heard you talk uh, more than once in different mm -hmm. episodes, but you talked about and you said about a routine and how sometimes you'll get this feeling when you feel like your routine is a little bit mundane, maybe. I, I think mm -hmm. I'm putting a word in your mouth there with saying that, but at the same time, but you just get that stirring or that feeling. It's like, okay, I got, I need to shake that up. I need mm -hmm. to kind of get some things moving and, and get a dire different direction uh, heading can you speak to what that feeling is and how you describe to yourself really, as far as like, where do you begin that process of maybe you, you are obviously in a comfortable mm. place, but at the mm. same time, that, per, that ability to have progression, to keep moving forward mm. is over always in the front of your mind. Talk about how, when you reach that mundane part of life and how you continuously try to can push yourself to move forward. Yeah. So I'll do, Let's see. I'll do an analysis of actually I'll, I'll, I'll take out a pen and paper. I'll make a list of the different areas in life. Like, you know, okay. Finance relationships, health, including like they can be mental health and physical health and uh, spiritual well-being. I'll make a list of all these things 
and I'll give them a rating, right? So let's say, you know, mindset is probably what, six out of 10, and I'll just go through and give everything a rating. And then I'll ask myself, what can I do to bump up this rating for each of these areas by just one point, right? And uh, I'll just uh, give an example, like um, physical health, for example. Okay, well, you know, maybe I go to the gym once a week. What if I went three times a week? What if I started doing yoga? I'll start making a list of things that I'm not doing that could actually bump up my rating. And again, this is my personal rating. I mean, you could actually ask other people as well. Hey, what do you think about, you know, <laughs> my mindset is that if you have to give me a rating of one to 10, you know, um, that's, that can be fun to do as well. But I think, you know, if, you know, you can just give yourself a rating to start with and uh, just be honest about it. And, you know, and um, the last time I did it, actually, I, I think I gave my mindset a five. I just wasn't, just felt like um, I had a lot of, you know, negativity at the time and, uh Maybe I wasn't, you know, I, and when I actually analyzed it, I realized, well, I'm not reading as many books these days. So I've got to, you know, put myself on a schedule to go through one book a week, at least maybe two. And um, I need to go from, you know, I actually skip meditation three times this week. And that's become a regular thing with skipping that. So when you actually go in, you analyze each of these areas, you can see where your weaknesses are, right? So knowing that, um, so let's just go back to, uh, you know, I need to read more books. Okay, well, it, be specific about it. What are the books that I should be reading? So I should go and identify the books that have been on my bookshelf for ages. And uh, I should have been, you know, I have not read them yet because I've been doing other things, obviously, right? But it's like, okay, well, um, this week I'm going to read this book. And, and every week I would just pick one book and stick with it because, you um, I'm very prone to, uh, maybe it's an ADHD thing, but I'm very prone to just going off and doing something completely different from what I planned, <laughs> right? And forgetting about what the plan is. But that's the thing is like, Jim is the same thing. If I if only go into the gym once a week, what if I went three times a week, right? So again, I would put it on my calendar and just say, I'm going Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, you know, it's not a debate. It's not a discussion with myself or negotiating. I'm just going every day at 1 p.m. in the afternoon because that's when I have time is from 1 to 3 p.m. So just being, um, you know, if you can decide when you're doing it, what time you're doing it. And then if you do this for 30, 60, 90 days, let's just say 30 days to keep it, to keep it easy. Um, now what you do after the 30 days, after you've been doing this, you know, you've been running a test. Now go back and give yourself another rating again. And I'd be surprised if most people didn't have at least, you know, if they didn't rank up at least one, if not two. And again, you're just going by how you're feeling about it, really. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's kind of a hard, hard thing to track, but, you know, you like, you know, if you did the work, right? So, you know, and, and sure, you can track these things too. Like if you're going to the gym three times a week, well, just put that on your calendar, like put a, however you want to, you can just write. I actually did that. I, I wrote it in my calendar. I'd be like a, like a, daily journal I put it in there and I just because you want to be accountable to yourself as well right so um make note of it you know like when you do these things so yeah you know I had a win these I had a win today you know and at the end of the day I'll actually look back on that day and go yeah I actually did these things and what didn't I do you know so identifying what I didn't do that I said I was going to do because uh, if you're not showing up for yourself, well, then you're going to lose trust in yourself. And that's a really, um, that's for me, that's a big issue because you need to, I think we constantly need to be building that trust muscle, you know, so that um, we're not just, we, I mean, I'll show up for a lot of other people, but I won't always show up for myself. Right. So, mm. um, you know, in which case I'm, I think I'm just devaluing myself by not doing that. So. No, I just recommend anybody if you, um, you know, if you want to get better at something, just, um, yeah, or like write down those. I think the six areas would be like, you know, your, um, um, yeah, the mindset is key, you know, financial wealth. Now that doesn't, um, I'm not just referring to money, by the way, that can, uh, you know, relationships are also, uh, that's also abundance right there. Like that's wealth there, you know, so wealth can be a kind of a broad spectrum, right? But just make a list of those, uh, you know, the, the key areas in your life and then just ask yourself that, like, give yourself a rating. And then ask yourself, what could I do better? And so what I would do just like, like in a notebook or something like that, at the top of the page, I would just write down, um, you know, like my physical health. Next page might be a uh, you know, mental mindset. And again, I'll just make a list of things that I could be doing, knowing you can't do everything on the list, but just pick one thing for 30 days, right? You know, one thing that you're going to do better, more of something you haven't tried yet. You know, like I said, like maybe I started doing yoga and doing a lot more stretching and not only did it make me feel better because I, I, you know, I lift weights all the time and stuff like that, but stretching and doing yoga wasn't something that I was really 
you know, crazy about doing, but when I started doing it, not only did it make me feel better, uh, it helped my sleep as well. Like it actually had other benefits that I was not expecting, you know, health benefits in terms of like, yeah, better sleep, better mobility. Um, I, I could touch the floor with my, with my, <laughs> you know, I could touch my toes, you know, with my, so that was kind of, um, interesting, but anyway, yeah. It's amazing as you get older, how far away those toes are when you bend over. <laughs> it can be for sure. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah, that's super cool. So let's dive into a little bit more. I know this is a, a big topic of yours as well, as far as like, where does procrastination come in to all this, as far as achievement and goals mm. and moving forward and how we talked a little bit about the, uh, the self doubt that's going on in people's minds, right? They, mm -hmm. they get an idea, they have a, a vision, whether it's a book, uh, it could be a podcast, it could be anything, right? Anything creative, anything outside mm -hmm. of themselves. And they let that, those thoughts, whether it's from other people, just that self-doubt kicks in, which yeah. stirs up a little bit of procrastination, keeps them from beginning that process. I just would love to hear yeah. a little bit more about how that piece really kicks in and plays a role into achievement. Yeah. I'd have to say if there's any one obstacle or internal battle that I probably struggle with uh, still on a daily basis, it is procrastination. It is the habit of saying, I'm going to do it later. I'm going to do it tomorrow, believing that there's going to be a later and there's going to be a tomorrow. And then when tomorrow rolls around, it's like, oh, well, thank God tomorrow is here or today's here. That means uh, this thing that I was going to do, well, I can just put that off until next week. And the thing about procrastination is that I think it it doesn't just show up. For, I mean, we all do it, by the way. It's not, uh, you know, it's not... Um, it's not an illness or a disease or something like that. It could be, but <laughs> um, I think that chronic procrastination, which is really not everybody has that, but for me, the chronic procrastination is like a few levels above the norm, right? So it's uh, how to define this is chronic procrastination is something where you do something that you know is going to have a negative impact on your life and you put it off anyway. And I'll just give you a quick story. Um, a credit card bill that I had several years ago, and I always paid my bills, always paid my credit cards and all that. But for some reason, this one credit card bill wasn't linked up to my bank account, so the money didn't come out. So I started getting letters from the bank. And um, it's just this is just one example, but you know I have many, but I'll just share this one. And the letters kept coming from the bank, and every time they did, I was like, because to the pay the bill, I actually had to drive across town to the bank, go through this paperwork and stuff, and I was just like, nah, you know, and the procrastination would start like, I'll do it. I'll do it Friday. You know, it's my, it, maybe it was Monday. And it's like, I'll do it Friday. And Friday would roll around. And of course it's like, well, you know, they, they didn't really send me any other, you know, letters this week. Maybe I'll just, I'll just go next week. And it just continued that way. Right. And they, the letters continued and they sent me more and more and more. And they're all in Japanese too. So I played dumb. It's like, Oh, I don't actually, I can actually, I can actually read it. And I could read, <laughs> I could read the fine print and they weren't happy. And um, I just kept throwing these letters like either in the garbage or under the rug or whatever it was. And um, about two months, maybe three months later, finally, they sent me the final letter. And then basically what they did is um, I just thought, oh, you know, what's the worst thing that they're going to do? They're going to cancel the card and that'll be it. Right. Um, and this wasn't my usual behavior either. Like it's just, you know, but it was just like something scared me about going across town to the bank and paying this bill. I To this day, I can't even explain what why I did that. Right. Um, but anyway, I didn't. And what ended up happening is they ended up canceling not just that card, but all of them were gone. In fact, they canceled my whole credit, right? Because it just it goes to the credit bureau and they just cancel everything. Well, now I'm really done for because all my business is online. I had no cards to pay for anything. And so if I'd only taken half an afternoon to go across town and pay for so this is when I really like that was a big wake up call, right? Because then I started to see other areas where I was putting stuff off, like the clutter in my room that I've been ignoring for years, you know, and uh, just, I just looked around and I just saw chaos and I realized like it was all from this, you know, I called it chronic procrastination probably just because it continued to have a negative impact on my life and yet I ignored it anyway, you know, and there were other things too that similar to that, like application forms I had to fill out that I never did and that led to something me, me, you know, like, you know, maybe I, I didn't get money back for something or whatever. Like I, I didn't get the passport renewed, you know, and we needed it. Like, you know, we need to, we're on a, going on a trip next week, stuff like that. But here's the thing is like, when you actually look at it, 
um, tracing it back to, it's really hard to trace back to, but I mean, it starts as something, I think, you know, when we're probably, you know, kids maybe, right? And it up, so I remember when I was a kid getting, uh, you know, coming home on a Friday with, you know, we always had homework on the weekends, of course, and uh, coming home on Friday with my backpack, knowing there was a test on Monday, just throwing the bag in the corner and then picking it up, picking it up Monday morning and going to school and failing the test, right? That wasn't a one-time thing. That was like all the time, you know, so it kind of started like that. I mean, just as far back as I can remember, but it filtered into every part of my life, right? And I think that, um, you know, for some people, like it depends too. It depends on which area it is. Cause for me, it was always like, if it was something that was money related or had to do with finance or going to an institution, whatever it might be, I would put, I would ignore that. I would avoid that stuff as much as I could. So there was something you know, like about that, that just created a lot of fear. And this is actually where the procrastination begins is you've got a fear of doing something because it could be, you're afraid of failing at it. Um, you're afraid of what the negative out there, there could be an outcome that uh, is going to you know, happen if you do this thing. And, you know, so you just avoid it, right? You know, like, I mean, I didn't do my, my study for my test because I believed that I was going to fail the test. Well, by not studying for it, I failed it anyway. So, you know, um, but that's the thing, like it, it just went on and on and on like that for years. And you actually start to develop like a survival mechanism. Like you start to really lean into your, um, you know, like survival mode for that, right? You know, because in this one area, um, I would put things off. Yet over here, I was very diligent about uh, going to the gym and working out and training and all that. I do that five times a week and I almost never put that off, right? So I'm thriving over here and failing over here. And as life went on, and I'm just saying this because, you know, if you're in this situation where you feel like you're procrastinating on something that you really want to do, you really want to get better at it, um, this is actually where the book came about, Do the Hard Things First, because I, I had to get serious about this thing. It's like I was, I just had things, things were still, you know, in a mess, you know, like finances were always in a mess, um, mostly because I wasn't dealing with anything over there, you know, and I probably hadn't for like 40 years. <laughs> and over here, I was still thriving with uh, working out. But eventually, like what, uh, what happens in one area, we start failing in one area, eventually it gets to be so much that actually does start to leak over into the other areas of your life. Right. And I realized like, um, eventually I stopped working out, stopped going to the gym, stopped doing a lot of things, you know, and, and whenever I thought to myself, yeah, you know, I should really go do that thing, but I'm not going to, because there's a new show on Netflix. And then, you know, I would just all like default to the, um, the, 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 road that is the easiest, you know, the easiest path to take the path of least resistance, right? That's the path that's the most dangerous to me and um, still fall into it every day. Actually, there are things where that com it'll come up and I still catch myself going, well, you know, I really, I really need to email this person and, or email this company or whatever it is, but no, I think I'll just wait until tomorrow. Um, and I catch myself going, well, wait a minute. If I email them today, I would get it over with and it's done and it would only take me five minutes. And that's the thing is that we put these things off and off and off and off and for a long time and the amount of time and actually energy you put into avoiding these hard things. And a lot of them actually are not that hard at all. Um, if you actually did that thing, <laughs> it would probably take you, you know, maybe like, uh, like again, if I had taken an hour out of an afternoon to drive across town to pay that bill, it would have been done. Instead, I ended up, uh, it took me three years to get my credit back, right? You know, now that's maybe a little bit of an extreme um, situation, but that's actually the reality of what happened, right? And the reality is I could have avoided all that, you know. Um, I learned a lesson from that, but I didn't learn the, I didn't actually, you know, didn't stop me cold turkey from still procrastinating, but it really, it did start me um, looking at other areas of my life and going, yeah, I'm actually, uh, this isn't working out very well. So sat down and I'm a big, I'm a big believer in like just sitting down, getting quiet with yourself and taking, uh, you know, like taking a, uh, like making notes and everything, right. You have to walk through these things, right. To figure out, you know, you know, what, what am I avoiding? Where did I go wrong? But more importantly, um, what can I do moving forward so that I can reverse this behavior? Not just reverse it, but I just want, you need to create new behaviors, right? And procrastination is a, one of those behaviors where 
honestly, I mean, it's, I think that it's one of those behaviors that you never really recover from it. It's almost like uh, when you go into recovery for an addiction, you always have to stay in recovery or you slide back into the addiction and procrastination is the same thing. I'm not calling procrastination an addiction, but it's be, the, the way that we feed into it is the same thing. Like for me anyway, it was the same thing, you know, and I've been through re, re, um, addiction recovery and procrastination felt a lot like that because when I'm not focused on the things um, that I'm putting off and making a decision every day to do at least one hard thing, I'm taking the path of least resistance and just doing the easiest things. And these other things over here are piling up, you know, and this it still happens sometimes, you know, so you just, you got to catch yourself um, when you're in the middle of it or before you start doing it. And then again, just make a list. Of, so here's what I did. You know, I went around my house, went around um, into my computer. I just, I just looked at everything and I made a list of all the things that were breaking down or broken. And the reason is because I wasn't working on them and I just let them go, right? Like a garden that uh, becomes, you know, it gets a lot of weeds. <laughs> we have to pull the weeds out, right? And I had a lot of weeds. So I made a list of all these things. And then now, now that can be very overwhelming, right? And overwhelm is the one thing that's going to drive you back to procrastinating. So you have, first of all, you have to recognize that you are going to feel overwhelmed when you look at your list of things to do. But remember, you don't have to do all these things in one day. The key is to take action. Take action. So what I did is I, I choose one thing on my list and I just do that one thing for that day. And there might be 300 things on the list and I'll keep adding to it. But as long as I'm doing one thing a day, that, uh, that magic word progress, you feel like you're making progress towards something. And I know this is nothing new. Like, yeah, we have to take action and do something. But the thing is, I mean, if I'd been doing that in the first place, I would not have ended up in a big mess, right? Because, uh, and here's the thing, you have to, sometimes you have to break that action down into like, I, I think it's like uh, James Clear might call it the two minute rule. I think I use the five minute rule, but if there's something I can do that'll only take me five minutes to do it, I'll, it, it, even if it is the easiest thing on the list, by the way, at least it's something, right? You know, um, because sometimes the hardest thing on your list, by the way, and here's the thing is like, you may think you have to do everything that's on your hard to do list, but what if you could actually hire someone to do it, right? Um, cutting the grass is an example, right? Who, who says you have to be the one out there cutting the grass? It has to be done and you've been putting it off, which is maybe why you have six feet of grass in front of your house. But you can <laughs> bring someone over, hire someone, you know, for like 20, 30, $50 to cut your grass. So I figured out like, like now I just, when I look at something and if I'm really putting it off, one of the first questions I'll ask myself is, who can I hire to do this thing for me? And that might be somebody locally in your community, if it's something that they have to come in and physically do it. Or because a lot of my work is online, I just hire someone on Fiverr or Upwork and, and get someone to come in and build that landing page because I need that landing page to build my business, to sell my products, things like that, right? Um, and I hate doing landing pages. So <laughs> that's one thing that I would definitely procrastinate on um, and wouldn't, wouldn't get that done unless I actually pays somebody, you know, 50 bucks to come in and do it. So that's the thing too, is like, you don't have to be the one to, so that's, the, if you have your list, right, make your list. And what I would do is I, I would identify the things that I do need to do on this list because I'm maybe the only one that can do them. But then I'll identify um, what are the things that I can hire other people for, outsource it to, to somebody, you know, whether it's virtually or, you know, like, uh, like I said, they're coming over to your house to do it. So, um, but so it's not, it's not a complicated system. It's just being clear on what it is that you're putting off and you don't even have to go into like the whole why and, you know, how long I've been procrastinating for. Um, I really, I think a lot of that's just irrelevant. Just recognize that, um, we all do it. Um, you're in a mess probably because you, you know, you are doing it and just, Visualize how much greater your life would be if you took action on these things that are just like for, for me, like a, like, you know, having clutter all around my room. Like I just kind of got so used to it that I got used to it and I just thought, well, oh, okay, well, no big deal. There's another pile in the corner <laughs> and next week there'll be another one. And then, you know, I'll be putting stuff under the bed, but I realized that um, after I cleaned everything up, then I realized how much better I felt like this. Then I was like, wow, this is awesome. Like I was living in a, in a mess for years and I just spent the afternoon, cleaned everything up. And, you know, I just felt great because I took action and I did something about it. Right. So, um, 
one more thing I was just going to mention about that too, though, is like break everything down, like break things down to, into really small steps if you're really struggling, because coming back to that overwhelm, like when you look at something, if it's really overwhelming, it could be a project, actually. Now, you may not, you're not, you're not going to finish a project in five minutes or even, even like a week. So what I would do with my projects, and I have many of them, I break those down into smaller steps too. And every day um, I'll just go, okay, well, today I'm going to do this and this and, you know, it'll take me like 20 minutes, right? But you just have to do a little bit of something here and there, you know, like small steps really, that matters because the small steps are going to get you the small rewards and that leads into the, like the bigger rewards. So. Love that. So the theme so far, everything we've been talking about, right? Having the courage, having the awareness mm -hmm. to take that action, right? To make that decision, to then begin taking that action, becoming aware of, of your procrastination pieces, right? Or, or things, uh, you know, the self doubts, all of those, all that st I just call it stuff. That's the word I use it. That, that's my technical term mm -hmm. of, of everything <laughs> that's going on is all just that mental yeah. stuff. So let's talk a little bit about how we can take all the pieces that you've shared so far, which have been fantastic. And I know another big passion of yours is helping uh, you're an author for yourself, but then mm. I know you coach and help other people, aspiring authors do the same thing. Mm. Can you talk a little bit about how somebody might be listening to us today and they have a story within themselves, right? Mm. And they know it, they feel it, but they're just having a little bit of that self doubt, mm -hmm. a little bit of procrastination is kicking in, which is keeping them from, making those first few steps, yeah. speak to that person, talk mm. to them and let them know kind of where to begin. Where, where's the best place for them to begin? If they know for a fact, it's like that knowing you mentioned that earlier. It's like you knew for a fact where you wanted to go. You didn't know ex exactly all the steps, mm. but you knew which direction you wanted to go. Yeah. Anyways, please take, take a second and share with, with what you think the best place for those people to start. Yeah. So I'm going to go back to yeah, when I started writing again, actually, because um, I didn't just decide. So I'm just going to go back probably about 15 years, actually, um, way before we had self-publishing and, you know, people were still going through publishers and stuff like that. But I remember the day when I I wanted to be a writer. I wanted to write a book. I had all these ideas and I spent probably about a year or two reading a lot of books about writing. I mean, I read every book on writing there was like, you know, how to, how to write fiction. I wrote a lot of fiction and a little bit of nonfiction, but, um, I, uh, I realized what I was doing was actually putting it off again. I was procrastinating on writing, even though that was my number one dream because I didn't believe that I was good enough to write a book. Right. So we're going to talk about imposter syndrome a little bit. And I think this uh, relates to like a lot of people feel this way. Imposter syndrome is actually, by the way, like it's not a bad thing. Like I think we have a, it has a negative stigma to it because it just actually sounds evil. <laughs> but imposter syndrome to me is really, it's a good sign. It's a sign that you're doing something or thinking about doing something that's outside of your comfort zone. So naturally you're not going to feel confident about doing it, right? So when I started to write again, and again, because, you know, I do work with a lot of authors who go through this, um, they're all kind of scared. They're just like, you know, like, well, I've never written a book before. How do you write a book? How many words go into it? And, and all these uh, questions are going on. And the one thing that holds them back is that they don't actually start doing anything, right? Or they will start and they'll get a little ways in and then they'll get scared and stop doing it because imposter syndrome will show up again, which it will. And say, okay, well, you know, you've been working at this for a little while, and but uh, you know, don't think it's you, know, you think it's time to quit. I mean, it's you know, so like those the the voices in your head start to really play on you. But I remember one day when I just got so tired of myself telling people that I was going to be this great writer and do all these things, and and uh, finally one of my friends just said to me one day, he goes, like, show me one thing you've written. I actually had a lot of notes and stuff like that, and when I was actually you know making these notes and whatever, I mean. I felt like I was writing, but inside I knew I was just putting it off. You know, it's just like one of those tomorrow things. Right. Um, but when my friend asked me that, he goes like, show me one thing you've actually, show me a chapter you've actually written. Cause you've been talking about this for the last year, you know, and so, and he was right. And, um, that kind of made me a bit angry. Um, not at him at myself. Right. So I realized, okay, you know what? I've read so many books on writing that the only thing I haven't done is actually sat down and, put they put in the time and 
on that day. I don't remember exactly what date it was, but I remember again, it was like one of those times where you like, you make a decision and you just go all in. That was happened again. I was like, I'm sitting down today. I'm going to start writing this book. I'm writing a nonfiction book. I'm going to write a book as good as Tony Robbins wrote and actually use his book as a, a role model, like a guide. And um, that was it. And four years later, I had about uh, 200,000 words written. I had that actually turned out to be three books, <laughs> right? <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. It wasn't just like showing up every day and writing a bunch of content and then it was all gravy. There were a lot of starts and stops along the way. It was really hard. Um, I, I, again, you know, nobody was like, so publishing wasn't around. So nobody I knew had actually published a book. And so I was really just like all in on my own, just doing this thing. But the thing is, is like, I had a commitment to myself. I made a decision that I had to write at least one book because it had been a dream since I was 14 years old. So I guess to anybody, if you're stuck in something, you know, you might be, could be a sport you want to try. You know, I'm not saying you have to write a book, but it could be, could be sports, could be a book. It could be, uh, you want to start a business, right? An online business or a brick and mortar business, whatever it is. The one thing that was always holding me back was starting the thing. And then, you know, you start it, but you've got to show up every day and you've got to start every day. You've got to show up, you know, well, at least five days a week. I mean, I didn't write every day, but the thing is once I got going and I got momentum happening and I started to see the results. Cause like, so here's the thing coming back to the, the small steps. I thought, okay, you know what? I'm just going to show up every day. I'm going to write uh, three pages a day. Right. And I think I was using this from, uh, I think it was Julia Cameron's book, uh, The Artist's Way, by the way. Like she recommended doing three, uh, like morning pages, she called them. Right. And I think I got the idea from there. So I'm like, if I could do three pages a day, and if I did that for 30 days, I started doing the numbers. Right. It's like, okay, I'd have 90 pages. And then after six months. And so I thought, okay, well, you know what? That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to show up and do three pages a day. And that's just what I did. And that's to this day, that's still what I recommend people doing is like show up and do a thousand words a day, put in an hour, you'll have your book ready within 90 days or 60 days, actually. And by the way, just using that as an example, you can use this for working out, right? You know, you can use this for, uh, you know, building your your dream house. You can use it for anything, right? As long as you have um, something where you're showing up, you're putting in, you know, the work every day and uh, you're seeing at the end of the day, you're able to check it off on your, like on your calendar. So I had a, actually had a calendar where if I did my three pages a day, or actually I did a, like a word count, like a thousand words worked up to like three, maybe four pages. I would just put a check mark on my uh, calendar. And then on the days when I didn't do it, I put an X. And I think I might've gotten that from Jerry Seinfeld's don't break the chain method, but it works. <laughs> right. Cause what is great about it is like, I had to see the progress. Right. And you can, you know, look at your calendar and you've got, uh, you know, 24 green check marks and a few X's and it's like, but that's progress. Right. You know, like some people might just focus on the X's and goes, ah, oh, you know, I didn't do it every day. It's like, yeah, but for 24 out of 30 or 31 days, you did it. And, uh, and that way you can actually just kind of track moving forward. But that's what I did. I mean, that was the discipline and just, um, you know, three or four years later, yes. So publishing came around and I'd, I'd already, by the way, I've been pitching my, my books to publishers already. And I had a couple that are interested, but the self-publishing route, route, uh, you know, that, that journey was a very different thing. I think once, once things <laughs> took off, um, I couldn't actually stop, but that's the great thing about it is like coming back to our discussion earlier about, you never know what's going to happen when you start something that, you know, maybe you've always wanted to start. And again, it can be whether it's, uh, you know, you're in sports or you're working on a hobby or, and the thing is too, like I always called my, um, like my writing, by the way, I always refer to it as my hobby. Right. So I never really took it seriously, even after I was publishing books and, even after I started making money, I was like, oh, yeah, I guess I got lucky and a few people bought the books, you know, and, and then I started making more money. I was like, well, I guess I got really lucky. And uh, but here's the thing, right? My point is like luck is something that shows up when, yes, you put in a lot of hard work, but you just stick with it. Like persistence and resilience, um, grit, these things really do matter. Um, you don't have to, you know, you, you don't have to. Uh, you know, be like David Goggins or something and <laughs> go crazy with it. But I mean, I think you just have to, you know, show up when you can, right? So for me, like, uh, I mean, again, like I had to put time into this and I had a young family at the time and, uh, you know, a full-time job as well. And that's another thing that holds a lot of people back is like, well, 
I'll call them excuses, but I mean, it is a re the reality is that most people have a job and family. And so you may have something that you want to build or something you want to do, and you really don't have time. And I get that. And so I realized like, so one of the things that I would say is like, well, you know, I'm going to do this thing when I have more time. Well, when is that going to be, um, you know, when I retire, like by that time, it could be too late. I might not make it that far. So I was like, what if I woke up an hour earlier, right? What if I stayed up an hour earlier? Yes, I made some sacrifices for sleep, right? But I was getting the work done. I was getting, putting the words in. I was getting, you know, I was getting it, uh, I was getting something accomplished. And I figured out actually that um, this is actually possible just by working away at it, like small chunks at a day. And by the way, the, the imposter syndrome that I had, that gradually melted away where the imposter syndrome became, um, it wasn't fueled by like, I didn't, uh, I wouldn't call it motivation. It wasn't that motivation is just a, a kind of a myth, you know, it's kind of like up and down. And, and by the way, and, and so is like waiting for confidence. Like there's no such thing as I'm going to do this when I get more confident. The confidence only shows up when you've actually put in the work first, right? That's how you build confidence. You know, it's like a muscle too. Like once you stop doing the work, you lose confidence. So, you know, they're hand in hand, right? But yeah, the imposter syndrome is the one thing that will hold us back because there's something inside like, you know, in our heads is saying like, this isn't really possible. It's like, you know, it's just a dream. And, and other people might tell you the same thing. You might have people around you that are telling you like I did, that, like what I, before I moved to Japan, people are like, you're not really doing that. I mean, you've got a, you've got a job and things like that. And, and by the way, that job that I was holding on to, that company went like bankrupt a couple of months after I moved here. So, <laughs> so, so anyway, uh, <laughs> side note, um, the thing is, is like, um, I knew like, you know, people were saying these things and I was kind of believing them a little. I was going, well, what if he's, you know, what if they're right? Like, what if it doesn't, uh, work out? But then I realized like, well, what's the alternative, right? The alternative is I don't do this thing. Now let's take a look at that future. Okay. So I'm going to stay the same, doing the same thing and time's going to go by and, you know, like, uh, you know, I mean, my kids will grow older and now suddenly like now you do have the time and now you don't know what to do with it. Now you realize like, well, now it's 10 years later or 20 years later, whatever it is. And, you know, if I'd started doing this thing like 20 years ago, where would I be now? So this is where we get into creating the anti-vision. We talked a little bit about the vision that you have for your life. Well, imagine the anti-vision of that where, and this is something that actually scared me enough to take action is like i visualized what would happen if i didn't do this thing right you know if i didn't fulfill them you know, i don't call it chasing your dream right but and and i kind of created a vision for myself where it's like wow the the reality of showing up uh you know when i'm like 50 60 or 80 and having the regret of looking back and going you know i wish i really done that thing um I'm okay to look back with re not regret, but I'm okay to look back and go, yeah, you know, I, I failed a lot, a lot along the way, but um, you know, like I made it or maybe you didn't make it, but at least you gave it a good shot either way, you know, to look back and realize like you actually could have made a difference in your life, but you didn't because you didn't, uh, maybe you didn't have the time, but also maybe you didn't make the time, you know? So that's just, uh, just something to think about um, that, there is time to do the things you want to do, but you may have to make a sacrifice or two, right? And it's not going to be forever, but you've got to, you've just got to get that momentum going, right? Because that momentum, by the way, for me, it turned into, again, energy. It turned into an energy, which actually turned into, I'm going to call it a healthy obsession, <laughs> which I still have. Tony Robbins would call it hunger. He's like, you've got to have hunger, right? And that's really like, for me, like the hunger is the obsession or the obsession is the hunger. You know, um, it's a good obsession to have, though, I think. But uh, again, you know, don't work yourself to death, but you've got to take time to reflect. And, um, you know, I still do journaling to this day. I love writing things out, writing out my thoughts. And um, because it gets clarity, clarity is the key. And then I just teach people how to how to do these things that to them, to me, it's like, I'm not saying like it's easy, right? But um, it's not easy for me either. Like, it's still hard to do a lot of like, things but again it's like do i need to do this thing or can i just pull someone else to, in to help me and so asking for help was something i was never very good at but i got good at it when i realized if i didn't i wasn't going to achieve my goals you know and you know that's it so um anyway yeah i hope uh you know people got a lot out of that it's just uh so just to clarify what this is 
um, three things. So what I would do is write down what your goals are, even if you're not even like six, even if you're not even really sure what they are, just like write down something. Like there's got to be something in you that you've always wanted to do. It can be one thing, can be three things, can be 10 things, but write those down, right? Um, one of my things, by the way, was skydiving. Always wanted to go skydiving. Um, I've done, I've done hundreds of scuba dives before and all kinds of like other crazy stuff. Never went skydiving until December. I went to Hawaii. I had the chance to go skydiving and I actually was going to say no to it. I was like, no, nah, you know, like I would have done that 20 years ago, but not now. And greatest, like one of the greatest things I ever did, you know, jumping out of a plane mm. at 20,000 feet. Um, <laughs> so anyway, um, point is though, like make your list. The second thing is, um, um, you need to, uh, decide which one of those things you're going to work on first. Right. And then just make a list of all the little actions you can take towards that one thing. And then the third thing really is just taking action towards it, showing up and doing it. Uh, like it doesn't have to be any more complicated than that. So. Fantastic. I love that. So the jumping out of an airplane. Yeah. I don't think that's going to be my cup of tea and I get that, but I can only imagine how exciting that actually is. That's super great. I appreciate you sharing all that wisdom. That was uh, very good. So folks, you need to probably rewind that piece there, right there. That was, that was gold right there. If you can take that and internalize that and implement, it doesn't have to be difficult, but it needs to be consistent. You need to be persistent. And at the same time, just take small things. Jim Rohn talks about the, the basics, the simple mm. basics. And when he shared that with me, through an audio program that landed for me mm -hmm. and, it, and it might sound basic, but at the same time, if you can get really good at the basics and you talked about clutter and you talked about just simple routines and just start there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, even with writing, if you can just get good at, at getting confident and building that momentum, getting your reps in, I mean, you shared so much right into that little piece right there. So I, I greatly, greatly appreciate that. So take a few minutes and talk about your programs, talk about your coaching, talk about your books. Uh, and then where are the best places for people to reach out to you? They're like, they're listening to this and they're like, okay, I need to get Scott on my team because mm. Scott knows what he's talking about. He's obviously had some life experience that I want to enjoy and try to experience on my own. Talk a little bit about what you have going on out there in the world and how you're trying to help people achieve greater things in their life. Sure. Yeah. So, you know, I started out as an author. I still am, still do a lot of writing, um, but uh, put a lot of content. And so, you know, I mean, yeah, I think you mentioned a few of the books, um, Relaunch Your Life. I think the title probably says it all. It's more like reinvent, reinvent your life, um, how to overcome, uh, you know, like the negative mindsets that we have and basically change your behavior. Um, undefeated, fail big, and do the hard things first, which is actually a series of books. We have three books in that series, and we have a fourth one coming out in May on how to overcome shiny object syndrome. So um, mm. I wrote that just based on... I need that one, by yeah. the way. I don't mean to interrupt, but I need that one. Sorry, well, please continue. <laughs> that's actually why I put the book together is because a lot of people, when I started pitching the idea to people, they're like, oh, when's that coming out? You know, I said, like, well, I haven't started writing it yet, but... Um, there's kind of like a story behind that, which I don't have time to get into today, but um, there's the one thing that almost destroyed my business, actually, at one point, probably during COVID. And after I came out of COVID, I wrote the first book and do the hard things first on procrastination because that nearly destroyed my business, too. <laughs> but the shiny object syndrome was um, probably, you know, had was the second runner up. So anyway, um, but yeah, I mean, the books are just geared towards, uh, you know, like helping people to tackle the the struggles that they have in just everyday living, you know, cause and you don't have to tackle everything all at once and you don't, you don't have to have like a perfect roadmap moving forward. You just have to identify one thing that's holding you back. Cause sometimes you just remove that one thing and um, like you can jump ahead 10 paces or 10 feet, you know? So um, it depends on the, uh, you know, I have um, a couple of books on how to like overcome rejection, for example. So that's actually uh, popular with uh, some of the companies that we've done workshops with because they wanted to uh, do some training around, uh, you know, like how to um, teach their sales force on how to overcome rejection because a lot of them, you know, their sales were down. So they're like, we have people out there who are like, they're getting rejected like uh, 20 times in a row and then they like, quit, you know, so... Um, so it really depends on um, what your pain point is. I'll put it that way. All right. Um, and yeah, you can certainly, uh, if you want to find more out about the books, you can find us at scottellenpublishing.com. 
and we have a Shopify store set up now for selling everything direct on scottallenbooks.com. I try to keep the uh, domains very simple, easy to remember. And then, of course, you can always go to Amazon and probably find everything on there. Just plug in Scott Allen Author. And I think if you did a Google search, you'd probably come up with uh, an interview or two, and you'd probably find a lot of the book covers on there, too. So pretty easy to find these days. Um, you know, but uh, yeah, I mean, that's uh, uh, one of our biggest goals. Like one of the big goals this year is uh, building out the course platform, which has been a big dream of mine is to, you know, got the books out there. I just didn't slow down enough to put the courses together. So now I'm kind of stepping back a little bit from the writing this year, still putting out a few books that we we had prepared from last year, but um, we'll be launching the course program in a couple of months. So really excited about that because I think it's great to just, um, it's one reason why I just, I love doing interviews and connecting with people is because it's just, you can reach people at a different level. So, you know, books are great, love books. And we have the, you know, have the audio books and all that too, but um, I just want to be able to deliver everything to everybody just, uh, you know, in whatever format that they want to learn from. So. Love that. That's yeah. So me, I'm, I'm more of an audio learner at mm. the reading. I do read sometimes, but I'm not, I, I'm not an avid reader, mm. but when the podcast platform started to evolve and then the, the audio programs and then the video right with YouTube. And mm -hmm. yeah, that's why I'm so passionate about creating this content as well. You just don't never know what is going to land for folks and putting mm. it in different formality or different formats, I guess, just to say is uh so super cool, super powerful. So that's, Fantastic, Scott. And I just, I just want to thank you for coming on the show. This has been so much fun. I knew that the conversation was going to be great. The research that I'd done on you up to this point, I knew that the stories was going to land, uh, not only for me, but hopefully for the listeners out there as well. So thank you for coming on the show. I really sure. appreciate it. I was just getting warmed up. So we might have to do a second episode someday. We might have to do a second. <laughs> you talk about the shiny object, right? Yeah, maybe we come on and talk about that because, like I said, we can go on many, many multiple hours about that because sure. I have that issue. Uh, unfortunately, that's where, you know, when you start out in this, you know, self development journey, opportunities then start showing up everywhere. And it's like, okay, I want to try this. I want to try that. Anyways, we, we won't go down that rabbit trail today, but I'm very yeah. curious your, your, out, uh, your experience with that, right? And how that's influenced your life for sure. So folks, go out there, have a fantastic day. I hope you found a ton of value in this conversation that I had with Scott today. Go out there, look for him out there on the internet, right? He mentioned his books are going to be out there. Search for Scott Allen Author. Uh, he mentioned a couple of the links uh, for his Shopify store. And he's going to have some, it sounds like some digital content coming out here very soon as well. Hence the reason why he's trying to find somebody to help him build some landing pages because that's not his cup of tea. He mentioned that earlier today. So he's in the process of getting that done as well. But one, like I said, I hopefully you found a ton of value in this message. If you would, would mind for me and for Scott, share it with your family and friends. If you think that the message that we've shared today would be valuable to them, the one thing you can do to help both of us and then obviously help yourself and then your friends and family is to share it with them and try to help them get some encouragement. Try to realize that they're not alone in this life journey, right? We're all trying to figure it out. But if you can just gain some nuggets of wisdom, a lot of them were shared in today's episode, take some action. You'll be very surprised in a relatively short period of time. I don't want to say it's going to be a very short period of time, but a relatively short period of time. You'll look back and you'll be like, wow, mm -hmm. how in the world did I get here? And Scott's story, and then if you've been listening to my story, you'll hear that that is all possible and it's possible for you as well. So go out there. Have a great day. I look forward to bringing back the next guest with you again very soon. Until then, bye now. Thank you for joining me on the Rich Mind Podcast. And remember, your external world is a reflection of what's going on inside of you. So focus every day on that internal battle and win within. Until next time, my friends.